Hey everybody, my name is uh, Randy Curtis and uh, you know, welcome to this video. It's going to be a great training video. Uh, for those of you who don't know my story, uh, part of it goes like this. My senior year in high school, I hit 250. Uh, a year later after that, I was one of the you know, pretty highly recruited uh, collegiate players and signed a full scholarship to Arizona State University. About four years out of high school, I was protected on the major league roster by the New York Mets. And it ultimately ended up getting traded. So how does that happen to a player that has, you know, absolutely no options really out of high school and by today's standards actually didn't have a very good season at all to a year later really passing everybody up and having options to be able to go to, uh, you know, some of the best colleges in the country for baseball. So I want to teach you what I was taught in college. When I did baseball mentor, Dennis Rogers, sat us down and we went into a classroom and really talked about goal setting. And that's when it started for me is putting together a plan, putting together a plan of what it would actually take, what's the roadmap to get you where you want to get. So I'm going to give you uh, some ideas on what I think goal setting is all about, how powerful it is, and why right now in December is um, a really important time to do it, because we're coming up on a season, whether it be your little league, pony, high school, college, etc. It starts now. It's all about the preparation. This is, this is the time, and when you start to put together the plan and the work, all has to do with what the outcome is in the end. So this is the beginning step. So I'm going to kind of walk you through it. Get a pen, get a piece of paper. And uh, number one, I'm going to go through six steps here. <clears throat> but number one is you've got to write down what you want. You've got to declare your goal. So it's kind of funny, but in my yearbook, and your parents will know this, you have a little section in your yearbook. You, uh, I forget what it's called, but your senior year you can write something in the yearbook. I put left field New York Mets. I already knew what I wanted. So I was already writing it down, and uh, which is kind of ironic because who did I end up playing for? And get drafted the New York Mets. So this is more powerful than you think. And you've got to take it from here, and you've got to put it down on paper. So what do you want to achieve this season? What's your long term? What's your long term goal? And I want you to keep it measurable or keep it realistic. So that's that's number two. Is I want this to be realistic. A realistic goal, a realistic short-term goal. So that may be, for example, uh, something that's measurable or attainable as you go into a game and, you know, I want to steal, you know, my goal is to steal one base this game. Or I want to have four quality at-bats this game. It's not where you're going to go in and, you know, I'm going to, you know, break the all-time hit, you know, record for the score, et cetera, et cetera. I want you to set small, measurable goals that are attainable, that are achievable, and that's one of the keys because that's what's going to help build the consistency over time. We're going to get to that. So you want realistic goals. And then three is I want you to put, you know, a timeline on that. So, for example, what I mean by that is when you set a goal, like I know out of high school going into college, I think I was about 180 pounds. And I wanted to be by, that was in, in, in summer, fall, and I wanted to be 190 pounds. That was my goal. I was trying to put on weight. I know most people were trying to lose weight. But that's, back then I was trying to put on weight. So that, I put a timeline on it. So, you know, I had five months to, to get to that, lip, to that level. So whenever you're trying to treat, you want to write it down. You want to make it realistic. You want to, you've got a long-term goal. You've got short-term goals. You want to make them achievable. Something that's realistic for you. So... Let's say hypothetically you're a robot student. You're a D student. You know what? I'm going to be a, an A student, you know, by next quarter. And it's going to take time. It's going to take increments. So I want you to kind of follow the process here. Okay? Number four is really your plan. It's really your plan. <clears throat> and you're going to make a list of what it's going to take. So what does it take? It take. I don't know if I'm going off the camera here. My camera's kind of bad, or my pin's kind of bad. Sorry, my penmanship. So, as it's going back to me wanting to put on that 10 pounds, uh, what does that take? What's my plan for that? Well, for me, I told my dad, hey, can you go buy me potatoes? So, every night when I came home from practice, I ate a baked potato. Um, I also um, was eating these uh, horrible tasting weight gain chewable wafer things. And that, that's just one example of putting together a plan. So maybe your plan is you want to become a better hitter. Okay? And you want to have quality of bats. Well, 
what does that take? Okay, well, that's going to take doing a sock toss every day, or it's going to take, you know, doing something every single day, or whatever that, whatever that is. I want you to write down what you think that plan is, okay? And if you're not sure, you want to seek out whoever it is, your mentor or your coach, whoever, and ask them, hey, what would it take for me to become a better business runner? What would it take for me to become a better pitcher? What would it take for me to, you know, to become a faster runner? What would it take to become a stronger, you know, athlete, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And once you know what that plan is, here's five, is you're going to take action. Take action. That's the key. This is, this is where most people fall off, fall off. This is where I started to pass everybody up through high school, because I had somebody to give me the plan, I made it realistic, I had timelines, I knew what it would, it would take to do, and I took action, I did it. So, I was doing extra work. So, when I came home from practice in college, I, I did even more work. So, you know, I hit every single night. Um, that's the key to that. So, you can't go, let's say it's in the classroom, and, you know, my goal is to go from, you know, a C student to an A student. But well, you've got to take action. And the key, though, to that, and number six, and kind of like the final one, is going to be um, daily progress. So, it'd be daily, or it could be, you know, weekly, you know, progress. So, every day in college, to get better, I hit. I did extra hit. So, it was something that I did every single day. Like I said, when I was trying to gain that extra 10 pounds. Well, every day, I took, you know, came home and ate more than I ate before. Right? I had a plan. I was taking supplementation. But I would do things in increments of a day or a week at a time. And here's what Dennis really talks is all about, especially in baseball or softball, it's about consistency. It's about being consistent all the time. Your approach is consistent. So it's kind of like, you know, you've got this big math test coming up. And uh, this is what I used to do in high school and, and, and really where I failed. If I'd go back, I would do it all different again. But I would cram. I'd cram last minute. You know, so I'd spend all Saturday and Sunday getting ready for that test on Monday. But if I did a better job and I was more consistent, you know, with the daily homework, which I turned in, but if I was more consistent daily, then it would have been easier. The results would have been easier at the end to achieve than trying to cram and get it all done at once. And I see that's what a lot of players do, is essentially is, you know, they're getting towards the end of the season or whatever, and that's when they try and turn it on or try and increase their average or whatever. And, you know, it doesn't really come through because they didn't do... They, did, they don't quite have the confidence. They're kind of unsure. But if you go, if you take a daily approach with it, and you start to become consistent with your workouts, and you start to become consistent with your T-work, consistent with your bullpens, and you start to notice whatever you're trying to achieve, and you start to notice improvement, well, what happens is you start to feel better. So the plan, the consistency, leads to confidence. And that's the key. That's one of the keys in being an athlete is feeling good about yourself. You get the confidence down, and watch out. Success starts to happen after that. So I've kind of mapped it out for you. And just kind of reiterate. Write down your goals. Make them realistic. Set a timeline to when you want to achieve things. Have a long-term goal, but then you have short-term goals to help you achieve that. What is that plan you take? What does it look like? Write it down. And then you want to take action. Do it. This is where you're going to pass everybody up. Because most people don't get after it. They don't do it every day. They give up. They give in. Etc. Etc. They forget. They're all do it the next day or whatever. You want to pass everybody up. This is where you do it. And this is where you do it. This is where they fall off at the end. Okay? So, you know, that's it right there in a nutshell. That's what I did. And that's what the successful people do. Right there. So, I want you to uh, start out by writing down, writing down your goal. Okay, right there, first thing is you're, you're going to be ahead of everybody else. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, next time we'll see you. Thank you. Have a good day.